Live from Las Vegas at the Microsoft 365 Collaboration Conference, this is the Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices Development Bi-Weekly Call. My name is David Warner. I am a PNP team member with Catapult Systems and will be your host today on December 9th. Our agenda for today is we're going to check out all of the latest updates on PNP. That includes the PNP Framework, Core SDK, PowerShell, Yo Teams, MGT, Microsoft Graph <laughs> Toolkit, Microsoft Teams, and Power Platform samples. Then, of course, we're going to have our ever-popular Together Mode photo of the community today, and we're going to see three amazing demos by five fantastic presenters. Natalie, Harshini, and Chandra will give us updates on the independent publisher connectors, and we'll see a Notion connector demo. Then we'll see Mike Hollinshead and Derek Cash-Peterson letting us know what's new with Learning Pathways, and as always, entertaining Chris Kent list formatting magic tips and tricks. So let's get started by looking at opportunities to participate in the community. If you would like to demo a technical solution or pattern, we welcome you. We also welcome you to contribute on GitHub and provide feedback. So please don't hesitate to get involved. You're going to see a number of ways in which you can do that today throughout the call. Uh, so please reach out. In fact, we have a form there for you to fill out if you would like to take advantage of presenting. Simple as that, go to the form and we will ensure that we reach back out to you and get you scheduled. Our opportunities to utilize the resources are plentiful. We have a number of developer videos and community videos available for you to learn from uh, and to collaborate with. These calls are all recorded. Learning opportunities are there as well. We've got open source programs available to you. Uh, at the, a variety of GitHub URLs, SharePoint PNP, Office Dev, and Microsoft Graph. Uh, and we have sample galleries aplenty for you. So if you want to see how to take advantage of some of the more popular techniques that are coming new to the community, things like ACES, web parts, team samples, power platform samples, extensions, or list formatting, then don't hesitate to go visit our sample galleries. You don't need to remember all of these URLs. Nope, only one. M365PNP on the aka.ms domain will take you and give you access to all of these availability options. One of our newest repos are script samples. So Paul, tell us a little bit more. Hey everybody, uh, script samples is a site for sharing scripts that you would use for automating tasks in 365. So for example, if you've got uh, scripts that call the Microsoft Graph, the CLI, uh, PMP PowerShell, SPM Management Shell, all that good stuff. And uh, we've I've just recently added support for Power Apps, uh, PowerShell scripts as well. So if you've got any scripts in that format, then uh, the site will host those um, and you'll be able to search on them and filter them and, and, and find those as well. And we've got two new scenarios. So thank you to our awesome contributors, Siddharth and Kinga, uh, who have contributed. So one of them is a power app sample, which is which is super, super cool. Uh, and I thank you for all the contributions that are, that are coming in. They've been been absolutely brilliant. We're, we're rocking nearly 118 scenarios now with 161 scripts, which is super cool. Contributions are always welcome. So reach out to, to myself or, or um, what you can do is there's an AKMS address for getting started as well. So if you want to know more about how to contribute and how to uh, you know, what it's all about, then then check out that link. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. And as we talk about contributing to the community, we understand that there may be some hurdles involved. Perhaps they're new to GitHub. Perhaps you're a little nervous about presenting a, a pattern or a demo that you've created. Well, we want to help out. Sharing is Sharing is a program that provides hands-on guidance and assistance in a number of areas that could be from getting set up and creating our samples to actually using those samples. These are safe space opportunities for you to uh, collaborate with members of the Patterns and Practices team, MVPs, Microsoft employees, and other members of the community. And we have our ever popular AMAs available starting back up in January, uh, and you'll see more to come. We're getting ready to schedule uh, a React Controls AMA. That's a lot of fun. And of course, we're going to be coming out with our ACES, Viva Connections ACES two-day uh, uh, sharing is caring session. It's going to be a multi-part session that's going to get you set up to develop. So if you'd like to get more involved there, please don't take uh, hesitate to take advantage. And of course, once you do reach out and contribute, we want to celebrate you and recognize you. Uh, there is so much amazing contributions being made by all of you, and we love it, and we want to recognize you. And so our recognition program is here to do that in a formal and official way. We partner with Credly. Yes, that same Credly that gives you those badges when you pass a Microsoft certification exam. We are going to give you badges for all of the contribution work you do. We do need you to opt in, aka.ms forward slash M365PNP recognition. 
So we can tie you to our uh, Credly, to our GitHub uh, system, and we're going to start automating those. So we'll see even more coming out soon. So please don't hesitate to register. There's no cost. We cover the cost for you, and we'd love to celebrate you. Next week, we're going to have our Microsoft 365 platform call on the 14th of December. Uh, we're going to have three presenters. And of course, this is uh, important to know. It's a fairly new call. It happens every Tuesday. It is called the platform call because it covers all Microsoft internal presenters. So this is always going to come directly from Microsoft, direct from the source. This has become one of the most popular calls. You do not want to miss it. Make sure it is on your calendar. They are all very, very uh, important and valuable. And of course, they are recorded. So if you can't make it, uh, we invite you to watch the recording, but it's always great to be there. All right, let's move into PNP.NET libraries. And I believe I saw Bert on the call. Yes, I'm here. Thank you, David. What happened in the PNP.NET space? Um, for PNP framework, uh, we started working on the new uh, provisioning schema, so the 2021-03 schema. Um, we added, for example, support to um, use uh, all kinds of site collection uh, templates in, in a PNP uh, tenant template. Um, so for the folks that are not really aware of that, you can build like a PNP tenant template and apply it to a, a tenant, and it will create a site collection and apply a template, which is great, but it didn't support all templates, which we kind of now backfilled. On the PNP Core SDK side, uh, PNP Core SDK is our brand new uh, modern and uh, .NET 6 based uh, uh, SDK. We have a couple of big things. Uh, one of them is user profile and social support uh, built by Sergey. Um, so um, reading user profiles, everything user profile properties, uh, is there uh, following sites and following sites kind of checking what, what content are you following, yes, no, et cetera. All of these things are there. We have documentation updates. There's like a, a cool article showing you what's the difference between CSOM and PNP Core SDK. So if you're a system developer and you uh, are using Core SDK, you might have some things. It's kind of familiar, but not exactly the same. Now, this document, this kind of article will explain you what are the differences. There's functions and, uh, sorry, Azure function samples, tutorials uh, coming, um, yeah, and uh, plenty of other small and, and bigger improvements. Overall usage is still growing, um, around 90,000 tenants, so that's not bad. I think that sums it up, uh, David. Let's move to PowerShell. Usage, massive, 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 meaning uh, there is no, well, when will this usage stop? It's like so big, so this is really good. Um, each each month we get more usage still. Um, now, what's the team doing? Um, the main thing that they're focusing on now is, is, is uh, besides just doing the usual bug fixes, uh, is, is preparing for a V2 version. Um, so we have a POC uh, that's being built, not yet released, but uh, once the team is ready with it, it will, they will release it. And the V2 PowerShell um, has some structural changes. Uh, it will kind of give you the own the main model objects. You don't get see some objects back. Uh, you get like a PNP PowerShell object back, and then you can work with that. And how PowerShell gets that object, whether it uses core SDK, directly see some REST graph, whatever that will be there in the future. For you as a script developer, things will stay the same. You just get that PowerShell object that you work with. I think that's a big difference. Another big difference there is that uh, we want to move away from those Swiss Army knife commandlets with 533 switches. I don't know how many, but tons of switches, and that uh, are really powerful, but also really hard to use if you don't know the switches and the, the specific switches that can be combined and not combined, etc. So, trying to move away from that complexity by uh, offering uh, more, but sl slightly simpler commandlets, and that will also help, uh, with, especially with newer folks uh, using PowerShell. And yep, I think that's it, David. So let's move to the next one. Thank you all. Awesome. Thank you, Bert. Next up is Yo Teams. So we'll hand the mic over to Rick. Hey. So uh, lots of happening in the Yo Teams space. Um, our latest release, the 3.5, uh, we added some more telemetry, of course, um, which gave us the following insights that uh, a lot of people still need to update their uh, Yo Teams version because a lot of them are still using either uh, an, an older one, we see a 3.2 is the most used one, but um, the 3.5, the latest one, has something very special, meaning there's also a debug flag now, and then your development will go lots and lots faster, so uh, be sure to update it. And uh, we're also preparing for the next v3, uh, v4 version, uh, which is going to use the Microsoft Teams SDK v2, 
which is promise based. Uh, so uh, it's going to be a, a whole change and will make uh, life a lot, a lot easier. And then we have some stuff on the roadmap, of course, like uh, Azure AD app integration with the Microsoft 365 CLI. So the other uh, one of the other PMP initiatives. We'll do some meeting extensions and some HTTPS support. Um, the v v v4 version will probably be breaking, so but we'll see how we fix that. And then the Yo teams and the Yo teams build core and the deploy. They also had an update because of uh, the new 3.5 version release. And we want to especially thank Paul Schaeflin for his uh, inspection URL uh, update. Make sure so that you always update to the latest version. And uh, back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Rick. Fantastic stuff. A lot of growth there. So definitely check that out as Teams development is on the rise. We'll move into Microsoft Graph Toolkit now. Uh, we've got a new release, 2.3.1, including bug fixes. Uh, what's next? We're going to be aligning the uh, Toolkit components to Fluent UI. Uh, and UI web components, and of course, help is always requested. Uh, so provide feedback. You can always learn more at aka.ms forward slash MGT. Uh, very cool. There's been a lot of excitement around that this week here at the Collaboration Conference. So definitely take advantage of all those tools that are available. Moving into Microsoft Teams samples. Uh, there is a number of samples available to you for Microsoft Teams development. And as Parker says, we love to see new samples and your sample could be there in the gallery. So uh, if you would like to, please contribute. And if you've got an idea, you want to add it to the wish list, are you looking for an idea? Then check out the wish list, aka.ms forward slash teams dash sample dash wish list uh, is available for you to provide some information around ideas that you might have. Next up is the Power Platform sample, so we'll hand it over to April. Awesome. Thank you, David. Yeah, so uh, Power Platform samples, we welcome all of your samples for everything from Power Apps templates to components, custom connectors, custom functions, uh, Power Automate flow templates, Power BI, and Power Virtual Agent samples. You can go to aka.ms forward slash Power Platform dash, dash samples for that. Um, we have so many great samples already, a few that I um, have to process there as well. So looking forward to seeing more of your contributions and samples in the Power Platform repo. Back to you, David. Thank you, April. And there are so many opportunities there in the Power Platform samples. Uh, and if it's new or foreign to you and you're not sure, remember, we just started up our Power Platform First Time Contributor Sharing is Caring. So sign up for that. We'd love to help you. There are some really cool new features that you're going to learn there. All right, it's optional picture time. So I will hand it over to Vesa, who will share his screen. And we'll all have an opportunity to wave. Yep, one second, one second, one second, one second. Uh, you cut me off guard. Uh, I should be ready. I'm, I have a one task in this course, in this Thursday course, and I'm, I'm messing it up. Uh, we're starting. We are ahead of schedule, so you're all good. Yeah, I was like, I was doing com something completely different. Uh, here we go. Ooh, uh, looking good, looking good. Uh, I'm going to flip the scene a bit. Uh, so let's go to the uh, dark mode today, um, just to have some variance on this one. So I'm not always looking like the same. There we go. And let me put the camera on as well. It's looking really, really, really sharp. And we are not yet recording. One second, one, three, two, one. Uh, and now we're recording. So let's see how many people uh, if we can fill in the room. Uh, and Seb is being an example on the second row. Good, good job. Let's do hand waving one more time. Thanks everybody for joining. Awesome to see <laughs> some good good waves on the on the crowd. We should actually do a wave sometime in here. So try to do that. That would be awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thanks everybody for joining. Really, really cool. Uh, we'll grab a GIF animation out of that one as well and share it with the with the blog post uh, where the recording is published. So thank you on that. All right, then let's move into our demo portion of the day. Uh, our first demo is going to be by Natalie Harshini and Chandra, and it's going to be on updates around the independent publisher connectors and a Notion connector demo. Uh, so Natalie, take it away. Hi, everyone. Glad to be back here with Chandra and Harshini today. So just a couple of updates before we get to the cool part where they show their connector. Um, so, so far we have 44 connectors in production as part of the independent publisher connector program. And just for some new folks who've joined today or folks who haven't heard about this program, this is a way for anyone to be able to submit a power platform connector. Um, and basically the connector is submitted in GitHub, the whole process happens in GitHub, but you know, it shows up in all three, uh, all all three different products actually: Power Apps, Power Automate, 
and Azure Logic apps. So you get your name and your connector directly within the product, no downloads necessary. So again, so we have 44 connectors in production in total, plus six in the last two weeks. Um, so you can take a look. We have one that definitely probably catches your eye is Coinbase, um, as that is a really popular service today. But also Carbon Intensity is the first connector of its kind. It's a um, it's a environmental sustainability connector, and of course, we all know that this is a super important topic as we are in the climate crisis. So it's really awesome to see that we have the first connector of its kind on here. Um, and here are all the outstanding publishers on our right, and all of these people have received uh, Credly badges, thanks to David. Uh, David and I have been working on putting together the Credly badges for this program, so it's really awesome to have this here. Also wanted to call out that we do have our new project coordinator, so at the bottom of the screen, I always make sure that we include the project coordinator names who help drive this program. Uh, Nirmal Kumar is a new project coordinator, so just wanted to call his name out here. And we have 32 other connectors in the certification pipeline. Yes, we have a Star Wars connector in the pipeline as well. So it's awesome to see that. Um, as well as two other interesting ones are Square Business and Square Payments. So we're excited to see that. And you can also see that there is another environmental sustainability connector, CO2 sig signal at number nine. So awesome to see all these contributions and the community coming together to build these connectors together. Awesome. So, Chandra and Harshini, over to you to tell us about your Notion connector. Oh, thank you, Natalie. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Chandra Shekhar, and uh, I'm really happy to be here. And uh, I've been following the PNP calls from long time, but uh, the, now I get uh, time to share the presentation. Uh, let me uh, give the stage to Harshini, so she will be presenting the connector about the connector, then we'll go through the demo. So uh, we have uh, made the custom connectors for, for the organization that I'm working in. And then uh, we uh, uh, heard about the independent connector. Then we were so happy. Then uh, like actually we, me and Arshini were living uh, another two different countries. And then I shared with her that, OK, we have the independent connector pro pro program. And then we started doing the Notion Connector, which is uh, so many people requested in the community, Power Platform community. And then uh, now the agenda will be, we'll be explaining about ourselves and then how we come to the connector and then what's going to be in the future uh, in the connector development. And then now uh, myself, uh, my name is uh, Chandrasekhar and I'm from uh, Visakhapatnam city in India and I'm working in the UAE with the conglomerate company. And uh, I'm uh, in that company itself. I joined as an infographic designer in the beginning in 2019, like pre COVID. And then after I got a small uh, uh, pro business problem here to make an application. So two days back, that only I had touched the power apps and then I started building the uh, solution. Then, then they liked it. And then from that, I started using the power platform more. Then now I become the subject matter expert in this organization. And also recently, uh, when we already know that uh, we have the, uh, the user group, uh, user groups are there for the all over the world. And uh, I am one of the leader for the group, like uh, uh, subcontinent and MENA region uh, power platform user group leader. And also I'm happy to announce that uh, from now on, I think I can say that uh, we are power platform developer as well. Hey, hi, my name is Harshini Gadiraju. I am from Hyderabad, India. Uh, initially, I was working uh, on uh, Python uh, for visualization and all. Uh, so later, uh, I came to know about uh, this uh, Power BI, and uh, it is much more interesting about visualization and all. So I started uh, learning Power BI slowly and uh, became, a, became an uh, uh, subject matter expert in Power BI. So uh, one day, uh, Chandra has. Uh, said that uh, about this connector and all like uh, everybody are uh, contributing uh, this uh, mm, uh, kind of connectors uh, to microsoft so we had a problem uh, with the uh, notion and uh, that journey has started uh, all because of uh, chandra so uh, and i'm also a uh, subcontinent uh, uh, and uh, main uh, power platform user group uh, leader so 
and i'm happy to <laughs> announce that i am a power platform independent publisher from now on and yeah that's all about me and i'm more obsessed uh, obsessed with uh, uh, fitness data and patterns that's all about me yeah now let's uh, let's see where we can find the connector and here uh, our connector will be like in power platform from when we go to connector sections and we have the awesome section called uh, uh, independent publisher connectors and then there you can find the notion connector uh, it will be there like at the, like capital uh, no, alphabetical order it will be there and then once you go inside you will find the uh, enter beautiful play page with the, some actions already uh, there we have the actions uh, like list of all users and uh, preview in it is in the preview now and then soon it will be going to be all the actions uh, we have planned some and it will be there so when it comes to notion uh, notion is a note taking application it's a cross platform application and also you can have multiple co content types like checklist tables images uh, links and etc now our uh, main goal is to uh, like example I'm, I'm on a vacation and i cannot take all the work things to or the vacation place so I have the notion then where I can add my things uh, quickly. So our agenda is to uh, let's say we have a multiple line items where I noted in the note notion and I want to make them into the Microsoft list. Uh, that is the like it's let's say that is it. So how we will uh, we are going to show the demo and uh, let's see. Yeah, Harshini, you can take it from here. Sure. So this is my uh, notion page. So uh, our uh, main agenda is to uh, extract the data from a Notion page to a Microsoft list. So for this, we need a, a few prerequisites. Uh, so uh, uh, those are uh, first one is API. Uh, I'll just show you where, where we need to get that. So on the left side pane of this here, settings and members, when you click on that on the left side pane, you have integrations. So when you click on this integrations, you can see develop your own integrations. When you click on that, you'll navigate to a new page where you can create a new integrations uh, by yourself. So when you click on the new integration, you need to give a name here and upload an image. Uh, and once you click on submit, your API key will get generated. So that you will be using in your uh, automate flow. Next, uh, you need to share this page to an API integration key because uh, without you are giving access to that API, uh, it, your API will not uh, get, uh, you will, your API will not be able to uh, retrieve the data from the page. So the next is block ID. We need to have a block ID, which is nothing but a page ID where we can find it in a URL. In this particular page, uh, if you see the URL after hyphen, so the code after the hyphen will be your block ID. So all these three you will be using in your Microsoft uh, uh, automate automate flow uh, to achieve the uh, to achieve this. So uh, quickly I'll go to uh, I'll create a new flow and it is instant cloud flow as we are uh, as it is a one time activity. I'm creating an instant flow. And the flow name is open source tools. So as you can see, uh, the data, the content that is present is open source tools and the text behind the text. We have an URL, so I wanted to keep uh, a, a text in a one column and the URL in other column. So for that. I'm creating a flow and the flow name is open source tools and I'll check this manually trigger a flow and create. So the first step you wanted to do is you need to retrieve the data from the notion page for that. Going for notion. So to retrieve the data uh, from the page, you should uh, uh, use this action retrieve block children preview. So when you click on that as I uh, this is the new if you are using this for the first time, you'll be getting a uh, view like this. So here you need to give the connection name. It is as per your choice and the key is nothing but which you have created previously that API you should give here. So after uh, after uh, clicking on accept, you'll be seeing like this. So it will be asking you block ID and page size. 
So the block ID will be this one. And by default, it is only 100 pages. It will retrieve and uh, let us see the result once here. I'll just save this. Test. So if you see what are all the data like this hugging uh, all this uh, uh, text that is present here inside the body inside body we have results inside the results we have plain text and href here we will be able to see the data and our agenda is to extract these two uh, plain text and href so i'll quickly edit this so as this is uh, an array we are getting it an array i'll parse it i'll pass json and uh, i'm using this action from here functional expression as you i as i already shown you that the result is present inside the body there is a results so for that i'm using results here so that it will uh, retrieve the data it will go inside the results and retrieve the data whatever we want so we already have this uh, json uh, data that what uh, like the format what we want what i want so i'm quickly copying it pasting it here so as this is an array it should be an array here so i'll save it and test So you can see here that inside uh, inside the uh, body there is a paragraph and inside paragraph. So everything is in array uh, array format only like paragraph is of uh, array and uh, text is array. So we have uh, we all the list of uh, items are in uh, arrays only. So. To make it simpler, I'll add a new step and extract the data. So here we, we got the data and now as it is an array, I'm applying it to. I'm adding an uh, action apply to each. Apply to each. So inside this I'm adding an uh, I'm just I just wanted to save this extracted data into a Microsoft list SharePoint Microsoft list. So I'll just. Select SharePoint. Inside SharePoint create an item. So as soon as you click that it will ask for site address. So actually I have already created a, a list here. Inside my uh, 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 developer trial group, uh, royal group, I have created a list, and the list name is open source list. So I'll select this, and the list name is open source list. So when you select this, it will uh, display all the column names that are present in the uh, list. So uh, what I uh, expect out of this is the text and the uh, link behind that. So for that, uh, I for, for make it for making it easier. As I have already shown you that uh, there are multiple uh, arrays uh, inside uh, each uh, object. So I just wanted to make it easier, and I already have a code. I'll explain it. So here, if you see. So items that we got inside that we have a paragraph which is an array and text that is also an array and uh, this is an index number which is an object. It is indicating an object and inside that object we have a plain text. So we are directly looping into it and extracting that text inside the plain text. And 
in URL. We need to extract URL and uh, the name is href. So once you're done with this. You just save. Test. So you can see all the data that got extracted and exported it to SharePoint list. So this is just an example. Actually, we have uh, many actions in uh, Notion, so you can just use that and give your valuable field feedback to us and uh, we'll be coming up with uh, more actions uh, in Notion. Thank you very much Harshni. Uh, that's a very nice demo and I would like to uh, show, give shout out to our friends uh, Mujna Kanwal. She is the one who prepared the nice uh, uh, PPT as well and then most of the time she is like almost uh, behind the scenes uh, type of uh, person and she she's also try to make a content. She's a content writer and she tried to, she wants to be a part of a PNP uh, community member and uh, I hope soon, soon she will be there. And also thank you to Natalie and Srikanth uh, who helped us during the uh, the Notion connector publishing time. And then we are so glad that he's there and uh, every time he's taking care of us. And then uh, the lovely community, PNP community. And uh, we are so glad that uh, we are, you guys are giving us so comfortable and then we are so happy. This is our first time and we are looking for to say uh, more uh, more soon. And then next in the development, we have a few other actions where still we are in the development. We plan for them like acquiring the database from the Notion and creating the database like uh, from there and then creating the pages, appending block children and many more. And also uh, we would like to uh, have your feedback on the Notion connector and we also have uh, links in there. I will put the links that, uh, for our user group. Uh, if you're living in the MENA region or uh, uh, subcontinent anywhere, we can you can join there and we are trying to have a uh, monthly calls. Last month we missed it uh, actually and we're going to be active there. And yeah, that's it. I think. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mujna, and uh, thank you so much, Natalie, David, Srikant, Srikant. I'm really, uh, you know, uh, surprised after seeing his uh, efforts because he continuously, repeatedly used to, uh, you know, give feedbacks that uh, you need to correct this, this, this. They, there are few errors here. Uh, hats off to his patience. And uh, Natalie, thank you so much for uh, bringing us uh, till here. And David, uh, you are such a nice person. The motivation that you have given us. Uh, that was really, uh, you know, we are really happy to be here. You know, well, we are, we are happy to have you. Yeah, thank you both so much. Very, especially as first-time presenters, you did fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So All right. Much. Thank you. Excellent work. Excellent. All right. Let's move into our next demo with Mike Hollinshead and Derek Cash Peterson on what's new in Learning Pathways. Gentlemen, you have our attention. <laughs> Great. Right. Thanks, David. Give me one second, right. Mike, to put your uh, put your slides out. Sounds great, um, and I'll just uh, get us rolling into there. Uh, PMP community, thank you so much for having us. Um, go ahead and move to the next slide there, Derek. Um, for those of you who have not heard of Learning Pathways before, this is one of our open source solutions. It's also a template out on the lookbook that helps you train your end users um, with end user training content that you can customize as well within your SharePoint ecosystem. And so, uh, we've got a couple updates around. Derek's going to do a demo. The reason we're here together is because it is an open source solution, which uh, we all embrace and love. We thought we'd start with a little levity here with the Monty Python reference in, uh, the, in the Holy Grail. There's a scene where you know some folks are asking to bring out your dead, bring out your dead, and, and um, one of the, the characters goes, I'm not dead yet. We've got a lot of those types of questions from a learning pathway space with respect to Viva Learning. Hey, what's the story? There's a Viva Learning um, solution coming out. How does it how does it pertain to Learning Pathways? And so we just wanted to clear the air, get out there with the community a little bit. That look, all of the content that is flowing into Learning Pathways is also flowing into Viva Learning. We are building a bridge behind the scenes where if you've invested in Learning Pathways, then 
Viva Learning is actively working on integrating that content into Viva Learning. And so why is that interesting? Well, if you created a bunch of customized content in learning pathways, we want to build a bridge for that content into Viva Learning. So that's the strategy. It's coming. As you can see, that's one of the Ignite slides for Viva Learning on the right. Um, and uh, it's something that we're actively working on. And so if you have customer questions, I would say, and, and customers are asking or your or your clients or your peers are asking, hey, you know, wh which one should I use? If it's just straight consumption of the the user content itself, lead with Viva Learning. If you have customized content, if you're building solutions on learning pathways, then stick with learning pathways and leverage this integration as your bridge to then expand the exposure of that customized content into Viva Learning. And so Derek's going to show an awesome uh, demo of some of the things that we've been working on together and how you can actually create some custom content, which we believe is pretty easy to do. We've made a couple updates from a content side. There are some edge, some collaboration um, updates that came out in September. We're keeping that content flow rolling. There are some updates that have rolled out in the December timeframe, which I believe should be live any second now. I think it's coming out this week if it hasn't already been posted. Derek, remind me there. The December update, uh, we updated imagery for all of the for all of the products that you'll be seeing today as well as uh, a few of the descriptions like Mike had listed here. We changed those things and the Success Center. We also released a, a point release to fix a couple of bugs in the code. So we updated the web part to 4.3.1. So we're, we're keeping to our quarterly schedule um, of, of updating the content. And generally, although I was a little lax with that in September, I think, um, due to Ignite and uh, the other uh, airlift, we try to make some kind of community statement when we do the update so that folks are aware of the new content that's coming in. Awesome. And my last plug before I will hand it over to Derek to do some awesome demoing is, hey, we're working on Viva Suite content as well. Um, so folks have been asking for that. Um, it's, it's in the works. Uh, it should be on the way. My hope is early Q1 of of next calendar year is hopefully when we'll have that content starting to flow out so just a heads up that we're working on it and it's coming and with that i'll hand it over to Derek. great <laughs> yeah we are working at trying to make the um make the content updating a little quicker than quarterly but we want to make sure that when we make a commitment to the community to update the content that we actually stick to it so we, <laughs> we want to make sure that you know, we we're we're being true to to the community and make sure we're we're delivering on our promises. So, okay. So as far as the look, uh, as far as um, learning pathways goes, I know it's been out there for a little while, but it's always helpful to to sort of share some of the basics with folks. You know, as Mike said, you know, learning pathways is an open source solution. It is a micro learning solution. So you can use it to get product training, product information, product learning, but also use it to enhance your own um, your own internal learning at your company or wherever your clients where you're installing it. So there's two ways to install learning pathways. Number one is to do it manually. So to install the SharePoint, the SPPKG file and run some PowerShell to configure it properly and all of that. There's documentation for that on in our repo, and I'll share that at the end. We also have a lookbook template. And so if you've gone to the lookbook before, you can see, um, if you click see examples, you get lots of great cool templates that you can use, but under solutions, the really cool one that we're gonna talk about right now is learning pathways. So if you click on that, you get to see how we did it, an example of what it looks like, and then you can use it to actually add it to your tenant and it provisions everything automatically, including all the multilingual capabilities. And that's really the cool thing is that um, you can use learning pathways in 10 different languages. Don't quiz me and ask me what all 10 of them are right now, but when you provision through the lookbook, all 10 of them get provisioned right away. We're going to take a look at this. This is the site that gets provisioned once the lookbook finishes its process. So you can see it gives you some some sort of this is sort of your training center, if you will. And so you can click in, you can click getting started, 
and this gives you a, this is a SharePoint page potentially, but what the magic is, is this web part down here at the bottom, which is the Learning Pathways Content Viewer web part. And this shares with us, this is what we call a playlist called Steps. And this, this has a several different assets and it walks you through the process of and then so you can sort of click through this has a video in it um, you can click through all the different assets and get the information all of this content that microsoft provides is coming to us via an iframe through either docs.microsoft.com or support.microsoft.com so you can click through and the site that provisions sort of gives you a bunch of different ways to slice and dice the content. So here's the work remotely page. You're viewing just the work remotely content. Uh, when Mike was talking, he was talking about the content. As, I, as he said, it's generally updated quarterly, although we are looking to update that. The beauty of leveraging the Microsoft related content is that we do all the translation for you. So, you know, in this instance where, you know, we're working, we're looking at work remotely with Microsoft, you don't from English to Chinese to Russian to Italian. Spanish. Um, so we take care of that all for you. And then your users who are who are working in those different languages can can actually see native speaking content. OK, so the other thing you can do is really tailor the content. So there's a lot of content in here. And if you click on the Microsoft training page, you actually get to see a lot of the different topics worth of training that we've got. And you can see sort of all the different content. But you can also configure the web part to just drill down to a very specific uh, set of content. So say your IT department wants to just offer training on how to use different products in the Microsoft Office suite. So we've got Outlook, we've got OneDrive, we've got Word, we've got Sway. You can show all of that content right here. But what happens if, for instance, your company doesn't use Sway? You don't want people to learn about Sway. You can come into the administrative section and you can click in here. And this offers us a look at sort of all the content all up that's coming in from Microsoft. And it's categorized in these different sort of scenarios that we call these categories. So we've got um, the categories. These things over here on the right are subcategories. And then these little items here are called playlists. And then inside of each one of those are called assets. So we're going to scroll down under products and we're going to find Sway. We're going to scroll back up. And so you can see here are the four playlists that are attached to the Sway subcategory. Well, we don't want anybody learning about Sway right now. So I'm picking on Sway. So if it's important to somebody, I apologize. Um, but we're going to go back to our site and we're the amount of time to take me to click over here. And we're going to go back to Office 365 and start it. It didn't work. <laughs> um, this does cache all the data. So uh, now you can see the cache refreshed and now Sway is gone. So you can sort of use it to tailor meet the needs of your organization. Um, the cool thing, though, and as Mike was talking about, if we go back in our administration section, is you can also provide custom learning of your own stuff. So for instance, under scenarios, I added a subcategory called finance. I added this myself and you can show it, you can hide it, you can edit it. You can give it a custom image if you'd like. And I attached a an expense report playlist to this. So imagine you're using Concur or some other large software and you need to provide step by step instructions on how to submit and add your expenses. So I came in and I added a new custom playlist. These are the new iconography that we've just changed over. Um, it's a little more colorful and is a little more descriptive of the different pieces here. So I gave my playlist some data and then I added assets. So I added an expense reporting guidelines, creating a new expense report, submitting and approving. And then you can reorder them, change the order of them. But what if I want to add a new one? So I can add a new one and I can call this one rejecting. I could give it a technology if I wanted, um, but we have two options here. So we can either create an asset, which is going to create a page right here in 
the SharePoint Pages library, or we can add a URL to an existing page. Either way, that content gets iframed in. Um, so if you wanted to link to something that was in a custom knowledge base, you could definitely do that and use this as a micro learning tool for your custom homegrown piece of software. Um, so if you click create asset, It actually generates the URL for you. It generates the page, and then you click Save Asset. And then you can go back into the Pages library and you can add content. So what does that look like on, you know, on, in, from a use case perspective? So here's an example of the Finance Home site that we have. And this is just an intranet site for the finance department. They've got their end of year finance deadlines. They've got their onboarding stuff. But we've added a link here called Finance Training. So if we click on that, we've got some instructions on how to use the how to's and we have a list here so this is a list when you configure the web part you can configure it to either filter on a category a subcategory or a playlist or even down to the individual asset level so here i went ahead and i i filtered it by subcategory and i chose finance so now this is just going to show any of the playlists that are attached to finance, to that finance section that we had before. So now, fiddly do, we click on expense reporting, and now we can see our expense reporting guidelines. We can click through the process of creating a new expense report. We can see the content, we can click next, we can see how, oh, how do we submit that report? How do we approve that report? Now, I didn't actually create the reject page, but you get the concept is that now we can go through. The other thing is, if you are that finance person and somebody asks you, hey, Derek, I'm trying to figure out how to approve an expense report, you can actually just copy this link and you can send them that link and then they go to the viewer page and they can see the whole thing. So. I'm trying to be mindful of time, and I know there's one more person after me, so I'm going to stop right here. The only other thing that I will say is this is an open source project, um, and we love to have contributors. There are a few issues in the issues list. If you are interested from a dev perspective, um, I've marked quite a few issues as uh, great first issues. So if you'd like to take a crack at those, let me know. And if you have any questions, comments, or issues, learning pathways, please put them in the issues list. We monitor that all the time. I'm in there every single day. So thank you and have fun. Awesome, thank you, Derek. Thank you, Mike. Excellent job, appreciate that and uh, that you're mindful of the time, so thank you. Next up is Chris Kent off of a whirlwind trip tour out here in Vegas at the Microsoft 365 Collaboration Conference. He's gonna show us some amazing list formatting. Chris, wow. Yes. All right, everybody, I'm Chris, let's go. Let's look at some uh, exciting uh, list formatting stuff. Now, as you may recall, if you were here on uh, the American Thanksgiving, uh, there was an issue with uh, some turkeys and some horses, and so the uh, the horses are still out for now, and we're going to do a lovely kind of a Christmas-based demo here. So uh, just at the uh, conference in Vegas this week, uh, did a workshop uh, with several of these guys, and one of the things we were working on was this idea of Santa's workshop, right, and coordinating elves across multiple teams with all sorts of fun stuff. But as a part of that, they're tracking the toys they are building, right? So they've got this lovely list here, you know, with various toys and some information about it, uh, along with, you know, what, how many they're supposed to build, how many have actually been built, and of those that have been built, how many have been wrapped, right? And that's lovely to see, right? That's a little bit hard to see, you know, where are we overall? You know, we could try and slap a progress field together here, maybe using the calculator column or doing some of our own fancy calculations here inside a format. Uh, but what I've done here instead is I've gone ahead and applied a tiles view format. And let's take a look at that. So what this tiles view format is doing is a couple of things, right? So it's showing an image, and this is a sample. It's called the Elf Progress Board and is available uh, as of about 10 minutes ago. So <laughs> check that out. Uh, but it's also showing some of that randomization we talked about before. Right? We can see it's uh, getting a random quote here. Uh, it's also handling, and this is important, uh, when images don't come in. Right, so we're handling that here. Uh, but down here, we've got this multi-level progress bar showing how to do that with an image, and that's neat. Um, and then we've got some other interesting items down here. Now, we're not going to go into extreme on this because we're going to move that to the next call. Uh, but the idea is I have these inline pieces here. Look at this. I can actually click this, and I'm editing the item directly. 
And you can actually see it's saying updated list item. What we're going to focus on here is what if I wanted to do that quicker, right? So I want to be able to click here and actually set this to say 100, right? We'll see that not only does that value get set, it's actually updated behind the scenes for the individual list item. This list item gets refreshed and redrawn with all of our formatting intact, which is pretty awesome. And we can do some things with that. So let's talk about how is this accomplished um, and how we might do the same. So if we take a look at the format, which uh, is fairly extensive, so I'm just going to do a quick of that a quick find all right so we're gonna look for inline edit field oh that's not find let's go with find so we'll go find and then we'll say inline edit field there we go so we have this idea of inline edit fields and so what's happening here is we've got this quantity field and we're just drawing it like normal everything here is exactly what you would expect right i'm just trying to show a number so i've got the text content set to that display value the key difference here is i've just added this one piece right and if i remove that you'll see no real difference except i don't get any experience on that and then by adding that adding that i now get this experience all all done for me right so i don't have to do anything else to say that i want to let them edit that right here inside of my view format how awesome is that right i mean that is super super cool now this is supported across a few different column types with uh, various field editors uh, included. So if we quickly take a look at another site that's just got several column types, right? we can kind of see that. So text field, right? we'll come in here, column settings, we're gonna format this column, we'll head over to advanced mode, and I'm just gonna paste one that I've got just for time. Right, probably that one, there we go. So the idea here is very simple, right? So we'll clear everything else out. We're just gonna show a div, and then we wanna make sure that we set an inline edit field, and we get this nice string editor some basic text, right? And we'll save that, updated the list item now, it didn't actually save, so it uh, refreshed. And that's cool, but let's see what that looks like on a couple other column types, just so we get a, a feeling for that. All right, so if we take a look at the yes, no column, we go to advanced mode, and we're gonna place that same guy here, we preview that. All right, we took away the other format, but we can see that we get a checkbox, right? So it's customizing that editor for us, so we can check or uncheck that. And the same is going to be true for a couple of these other ones. So if we look at the lookup column right next to it, paste that. We won't be able to say display value on this one. I'll have to say lookup value. Do that. And we click on these guys. We see we've got a picker here, and we click that X, and we actually get the choice fields from all of our lookups that we're doing here. So again, we've got these nice kind of integrated pieces. Now, there are a few column types that are not listed as supported, but I will tell you right now, they are working at least in uh, targeted release for instance a hyperlink field so if we come here and we paste that we preview on the hyperlink field let's uh, instead of that let's do the desc so we can just see the preview version of the link and if we scroll over just a little bit there we go we can click that and we actually both get the the actual url and the description uh, right here so you can see we've got nice little editors built in same is going to be true for person fields multi-person multi-choice and so on. So this is huge. This is extremely exciting. This takes uh, list formatting uh, to the very next level, right? So this is absolutely awesome. Uh, again, on the 23rd, we're going to talk more about the set value action and how you configure that for various field types where you can update multiple fields and you can use expressions and conditions and all sorts of un other fun stuff for that. And we'll do that on the uh, 1223 call. That's December 23rd. But for now, let's just take a look. What the heck do we just talk about? So. Inline edit field, right? These are the supported field types officially. Um, so you got the single line text, you got multi line text, still no rich text editing. And in fact, if you try it, uh, it's just going to bomb out your field. Uh, you can do number and date times, and of course, choice and multi choice, person, multi person, and lookups. Now, just from my testing, and I think this may just be a targeted release thing, so your mileage may vary. I'm also showing this working for currency hyperlink, location, yes, no fields, and multi lookups, right? So what's missing here? So we're missing, uh, you know, taxonomy fields. Uh, we're missing image fields. Um, you know, obviously not the uh, the other types of fields that are read only. So, for instance, even though like date time is supported, if you try and put this on like uh, the created column, right, created created by or the you know created time, you're just not going to get an editor at all. Okay, so just keep that in mind, which is great because it respects everything you've got going there. Uh, but one of the really nice things this allows you to do, right? So in the case of the Elf Progress Board, right. There are times you just really want to focus on editing some things, right? But you don't want to completely customize that entire form experience, right? Just for that one scenario. So having a view 
that kind of enables the editing in just the ways you want, uh, really helps guide and direct users just to focus on what makes sense for what they're doing at that moment, right? So the task shows the things they want to do, that view does, and then they can provide the edit experience explicitly for what they want to do. That's pretty awesome. All right, so when you're doing this, uh, you can use the at current field um, you know, inside your column formats. And when you do that, that'll make sure you're just pulling the edit directly. Um, if you want to edit a different field like we did with the view format, we want to target multiple fields, right? We were editing three different fields with this inline edit field. We just specify the internal name just like you would. And then by default, you're going to have these border styles. So what I mean by that is when you kind of hover over it, right, you get this kind of two pixel, you know, square. It's got uh, uh, two pixels of border radius around it as well. And then when you actually click it to edit, it's going to have that whatever your primary theme color is as its border. Now you do have some customization option with that. And the way you do that is you apply these styles right here. So we've got this idea of an inline editor border. So these are all of these, and then you just add this hyphen. Make sure you note there are two hyphens at the beginning here. Um, and then you can use these like you would any other version of these, right? So if I wanted to set the border color to multiple colors, right? So um, I could do that. I could set it as, you know, red and then blue, and that was set, you know, the top and then the bottom to red and the sides to uh, blue or I could do all four, right? So I could spread that out across those and go for whatever I need there. And I will say this appears to only be affecting the hover experience, right? So if you change that border radius to 50% and you get a lovely oval, I don't know why you would do that, but you can. Uh, as soon as they click on it, it's gonna go back to that theme primary color and it's gonna hit back to that two pixel border radius, but it's still super awesome. And by doing that and keeping these hover styles, it prevents you know your format from suddenly looking very, very different than you intended but still supporting that rich editing experience. All right, so just to wrap up here, check out the documentation. This is fully documented up there and you can check all that out. And if you wanna go ahead and jump into set value before we get into it in a couple of weeks here, uh, the documentation is available there. And then this sample, so it's under view samples, the ELF progress board contains both. And we have several more samples uh, that will be coming in here in just over the next week or so that also demonstrate these things. Cause again, super exciting. This is a great time uh, to be using list formatting it really really elevates what we've got here all right and that's it for me awesome thank you chris uh let's wrap up here I'd like to thank all of our presenters today natalie harshini and chandra mike and derek and chris you all did fantastic thank you so much the recording will be available within 24 hours at the Microsoft 365 community youtube channel uh, you can see all of our uh, recorded sessions there you can follow us on Twitter at Microsoft 365 Dev and at M365 PNP. Our, our next general dev call, as Chris mentioned, is December 23rd. Um, we are going to have that. Yes, it is around the holidays, but we are a global community, so we are consistent. So we invite anyone and everyone to uh, attend those. Our next Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework call will be next week, December 16th at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and you can get all of the invites at aka.ms forward slash M365 PNP. Other call options available to you are the platform call, and adaptive cards, Microsoft Identity, Office add-ins, Power Apps, Microsoft Community, and the Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework. Again, access to all of these at aka.ns forward slash m365pnp. Thank you everyone for your time today and have a great rest of your week. Awesome, thank you David as well for hosting. Brilliant, brilliant job from every single speaker. So great job, thanks everybody.